welcome back now since he first exploded onto the inter-county scene winning two All-Irelands with his beloved Clare in the 90s. Davy Fitzgerald has become one of the nation's favourites and sometimes controversial sportsmen. And as well as winning All-Ireland, Munster and Leinster hurling titles as a manager, he's also become a familiar face on TV through Ireland's fittest family. But he could be facing his biggest challenge yet with his latest TV outing, Davy's toughest team. Let's have a look. Life is not always straightforward for any of us. Sometimes I feel like I'm lost in life. There's an easy option and a harder option. I'm not going to give out my trust to anybody. The easy choice in your brain when you come under pressure is to what? Give up. Blue Solo! What are you doing, you f***ing idiot? Where you're going <laughs> is pretty serious. My knee's blown out, man. I'd rather just not do it than look weak doing it. I am honestly, honestly taking this next few days so serious it's unreal. And there's one point there saying, oh, if you keep shooting at me, I'm going to snap. <laughs> Throw that to my kids. Failure isn't an option here. Failure is not an option. I'm telling you that now. It's your true character comes out. Tadia Wass, Davey Fitzgerald, thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good to see you. That's... Uh... That looks like an unmissable television programme. Uh, tell us first of all, Dave, before we go back and talk to you about your career and, and also current matters in the GAA, tell us about that programme because it looks very special. Yeah, it's called um, Davy's Toughest Team. Um, it's, it's a concept. At the end of every year for Fittest Family, I'd sit down with the production team and we talk about maybe different concepts or different things we can do. And I suppose um, at the end of the year, we said, We'd love to do something um, with uh, with the group between age 18 and 23 or 24, um, maybe that have come across challenging times. Uh, and as you see from the clip of it there, and that's one of the first clips I've seen, mm. um, it's it's fairly tough. It's fairly challenging. These guys have gone through various things in their life, um, sort of have maybe been a bit down. Um, there's maybe uh, drug um, use and various different problems that the lads have encountered. But... They were up for the challenge. They were up for trying to change things. And uh, it, it was an interesting number of weeks, I can tell you, I'm once. And, Davey, what is the goal and the challenge for these lads uh, to complete fig f uh, physically, uh, but also in other ways? Well, I suppose there's three or four things. One is they wanted to make um, different improvements in their own life. Um, so that it, um, number two is they wanted people very similar to them and their situations to look at them and to know that they could make a change. And I suppose, number three, you, you look outside and every one of us, trust me, when you look at this, um, maybe, I know myself personally, I, I would have thought maybe I had a tough and different times growing up. Mm. I hadn't. I had a fairly sheltered and fairly good. So when people look at this, the, 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 my things, maybe the way we had it isn't too bad at all. But the lads are brilliant. They're absolutely incredible. They open up. They're not afraid to share stuff. And I think that is so important. Yeah. Davey, we can see clearly from that clip, like, you know, and it's something that's often written about you when, when, or when people talk about you and when they're writing about you, the one word that comes through all the time is passion. You know, he's a passionate man. You can see it in that clip, you know, the way you... Where, where does that come from, Davey? That, wh why do you get so invested in it? Where does that passion come from? Well, there's one or two things, I suppose, in, in life... Um... I've been taught at different times you can't do this or maybe when I wanted to play in goals for Clare, you're too small, you can't do it. Um, I believe there's always hope, there's always a way. And if, if you're willing to change, if you're willing to do stuff, why not? Um, and like even some of the teams I've worked with, they've been told you won't win anything, you have no hope. There's always a hope, there's always a chance. And these lads, the same as anyone else deserves a chance, you know, and... Um, it was just some experience, and even for myself, I learned so much from these guys. Mm. We'll have to wait and see what happens because we know COVID obviously played a part in the making of the show, and ultimately the goal is to make it to Mount Everest. I suspect you're not going to give anything uh, away to us this morning. How did your own background in management, uh, Davy, inform how you treated these lads? Would you treat them the same as you treat the Wexford hurling team? Um, we use physical activity a good bit, right? To um, we use physical activity a good bit to just it, it tells you different mannerisms, right? When you're put under pressure, it'll tell you, okay, you trust the people with you. Um, what do you react like when the pressure really comes on, or how do you react when things when when things do go wrong? Like, we just get to find out so many different bits and pieces. So having the hurling teams is great. It it I learned X amount, but I'll tell you one thing. 
this was way different. I, I, I really needed to think outside the box and to look at every individual on their own, try and understand them. And I was really tested in that too, lads. It, mm. it, it was incredible. I, I had um, Matty and Dan with me, um, two great friends. And um, you know what? It was, I needed every bit of help I could get and advice on it mm. as well. And um, I'd like to think we made a difference to the lads. They're, they were only, they were looking to make a few changes in their lives. And I'd like to think, that uh, maybe we did help them out. You know, uh, we can see them doing all sorts of various different physical activities, but that la last clip we just saw, we, we see them talking. And that, Davey, I know that you're a huge advocate for mental health, and particularly in the current climate, that's hugely key, particularly for young men, isn't it? You know what? Um, we have to realise that. Like, whatever way you're feeling to talk is everything... Um, especially the way things are at the moment and have been for the last year nearly. Um, there's a lot of people felt isolated, felt alone. Mm -hmm. And you know what? We're not alone. We have someone we can reach out and talk to. And I think it's so important that you talk. Even these guys, I can tell uh, they were so um, protective at times. It was incredible. And to get them to open up that small bit and get them to trust um, is so important. And even for myself, to, to meet someone and chat to someone and talk things out is, is absolutely vital. Mm. I was going to ask you that, Davey, how you've kept yourself well in the last year because you, you, you certainly strike me in the, the public uh, persona that you, you go, you're going a mile a minute constantly. You're always in the car, you're always training, you're always going to matches. Life has slowed right down. How have you been? Guys, I can tell you, like, you, you know when you're going 24-7, like, it's, it's, absolutely, <clears throat> it's absolutely crazy. You're... You're in the car, you're going to Wexford, or I'll be going someplace all the time, and next thing, we, you were hit with lockdown. Same at home. Um, I, I was in trouble the first few days, and then I said to myself, okay, um, you, you, you've got to set a few targets for yourself, and um, a few things I did was, I looked at trying to get down my weight for health reasons. I said I was going to spend more time at home with my family, and I really focused in on them two things. and. Um, it helped me because I'm not that type of person who can just sit around at home and make a few calls and mm. do my bits and pieces of work. I, I need to be really busy. And um, I, I focused on myself, which is no harm. I had too much weight up. Um, so I, I ate a bit better, did a bit more exercise. And um, then my mum and dad just lived down the road. So it was great to be able to mm. just head down to them and spend a bit of time. So in terms of where we're at uh, at the moment, in terms of GAA, Davey, um, what, what are your thoughts on how the next couple of months uh, look like in terms of championships, league campaigns, you know, in terms of what plan has been set out and what changes you might like to see being made? I think you could see the benefits to last, last summer to the club player. <clears throat> I think for their health alone, their mental health, it was great that we got out. Now, we had the virus pretty well under control at that stage. We weren't um, too exposed. Then it was starting to get worse as you were coming towards October, November, December when we had the county season. And um, I honestly thought the GA handled themselves incredibly well. The protocols that were in place, guys, was absolutely unreal. Mm. Um, the GA had everything marked out for us so well. And I'm hoping maybe March, April time we can start get back to doing something. If we can bring these numbers down, um, you, you probably have the rugby and other stuff, soccer that are playing away at the moment. And if we can do it and do it safely, I think it's so important because even I know from my guys, they're they're cracking up at the moment, not being able to even get into feeling and, and do the running they'd like to do. Um, so I'm just hoping, even from a mental health point of view, that I can get my lads out and doing something because I, I know the value of last last October, November and December, what happened in the GA and trust me, we were beaten early, but the fact, the fact that players got out in the field and that I, I know there was some people at home that were tuning in every Saturday and Sunday and all they were doing was getting ready for their matches and for mm -hmm. something to look at. So I think if we can get to that stage where we can even entertain people and do it safely, well, well then why not, you know? Yeah, it's been a huge lifeline for people, sport across mm. the board. But as we know, Davey, the uh, current restrictions on the level five mean um, elite sport can go ahead. That includes training. But the GEA have opted not to do that. How do you feel about that? Is it the right thing? I, I feel it is just with the way it was after Christmas for definite. The numbers were too high and um, we are amateur after that. But 
uh, if we do get the numbers down, like I would like to see the fields open so lads could exercise in. I, I, I don't believe they should be closed. That's being honest with you. From that point of view, as regards meeting in groups when it was very bad after Christmas, yeah, I totally see it. Um, but doing that bit of exercise, guys, is so important. <clears throat> you can get out do that run or have your few pucks is, is vitally important as we get the numbers down um i'd like to see that the ga will play their part in it again and that mm. um we'll be as diligent as we were um back in october november december well hopefully so listen david it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you can't wait to uh, tune into the new series looks amazing keep up the good work and uh, stay safe and we'll see you soon lads thanks very much and uh, take care okay same to you, Davey. Thanks for being with us. And, of course, you can see the first episode of Davey's Toughest Team. That's tomorrow night on RT1 at 9.35. Looks brilliant. Right after the break, we are talking fashion. See you in a couple of minutes.